Unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the Word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the Word. Praise God. How to receive and receive from. Huh? How to receive and receive from the ministers of God or a man of God. Do you understand what I'm saying? Am I making sense? How to receive and to receive from. You know, it's one thing to receive a man of God. He that receives the prophet, right? Receives the what? The reward of a prophet. And there's also another thing of receiving from the prophet. You understand? The pastor, the teacher, the evangelist, your man, your woman of God, your pastor, whoever you, you want to call him. I don't know if I'm making sense. So, if you receive a man of God, you receive of his reward. If you receive from a man of God, you receive of your destiny. You get the difference? Receiving, you see, when he says, he that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. You understand? Receive a prophet's reward. But then, if you receive from a prophet or a man of God, you will receive, you receive of your destiny. Have you known the difference? The difference between receiving a man of God and receiving from a man of God. Have I made sense? Receiving a man of God and receiving from a man of God. Those are two different things. How together? So I want to show you how to receive and receive from a man of God, a man of the Spirit. Praise God. There are questions when I was growing up, I used to ask God. And I can tell you for me there were hard questions. There were, there were jigsaw puzzles. There are certain pieces that never used to add up for me every time I used to do the math. Of why, for example, Someone can sit under a man of God for one year, two years, three years, four years, and nothing about them changes. And then another person sits under that man of God for just two months, and his life is changed forever. Proximity is not access. The fact that you think that you're proximate to a man of God, it means that you have access to him. That is a huge deception. Jesus is walking and a woman touches him. And when she touches him, he says, somebody touched me for virtue went out of me. And the disciples said, what says thee that somebody touched you for? Multitude strong on thee. They strong upon thee. Yeah? He says the whole multitude sought to touch him. For, the, for there went virtue out of him and he healed them all. And the Bible says he's walking and multitudes are thronging at, at him. Right? He says Jesus said somebody has touched me for I perceive the virtue is gone out of me. Mark 5.20. And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee and says, Thou who touched me? Right? A woman is, is bleeding, right? She has a bleeding issue. So she says, If I but may touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. She fights through and stretches through the multitudes and touches Jesus. And Jesus says, Somebody touched me, for virtue has gone out of me. The disciples tell him, How says he that the... Give me the Amplified. And his disciples said unto him, You see the crowd pressing hard around you from all sides, 
and you ask who touched you. Because they think that the fact that they are thronging around Jesus and they are touching him physically, it means that they can access what is coming out of him. You understand what I'm saying? Proximity is not what? The fact that you talk to your man of God every morning and you have his WhatsApp or his text messages and, and then you chat every day and he gives you a high five, it doesn't mean that you're going to receive from him. That is not the reason or the way or the, 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 the guarantee that you're going to receive from that man of God. I don't know if I'm making sense. So many other have questions around that. I used to say, why is it that I see multitudes thronging around men of God? But they never receive virtues. They never receive virtues. The word therefore virtue is the anointing. They never receive miraculous faculties, charismatos. Not miracles, miraculous faculties. Of course we are still in a generation of people who are still seeking miracles. You understand what I'm saying? He says a perverse generation. So they seek after what? The signs. That's perversion. You come to God because you're looking for a miracle. But you don't come to God because you're looking for the source of that miracle. Do you understand what I'm saying? So many years I used to look at people, and I observed for a while, that there are many people who used to throng around men of God of our days. And I remember I never used to see something passing and pressing on through those men because they hung with a man. And then I saw people who used to come in the same circles with that man for one, two days, three days, one month, two months, four months, and their lives are changed dramatically. So I used to ask myself, what are we missing? And I realized that people don't know how to receive and receive from a man of God. Praise the Lord. There's a very huge deception of what it means to receive from a man of God. Some people don't know how. On Friday, I was meeting a gentleman. He came to me last year. And he hit shipwreck. This was a wonderful graduate. He spent all his years, tried to work. Everything he did failed. He went into many things of this world and almost got wasted to, to lying, right? And in that destruction experience, this fella finds Jesus. He tries to look for jobs, he does all kinds of things, he loves God, but everything fails. This graduate, because he needed to put food on the table, he started making small things like liquid soap, you know? But he's an, he's an old guy. He's probably in, I, probably his early 40s. Everything had failed. He comes to my office. He tells me, I am stuck in every aspect of life. Every aspect. Every aspect of life. And now I've, I've reached with end. I don't know anything or any more or what to do. I need God to help me. And I wrote a list of a few sermons because I knew all he needed was a certain knowledge. And I gave that, sum, that list to Matt, and Matt gave him that, those sermons, and he went to listen to them. And then he was telling me on Friday, he used to call his wife, and then he would put her in a room and tell her, this is why we are stuck. I tell you, in about two or three, four months of listening to those sermons, almost every time he had the opportunity, this guy got one of the most coveted positions in the United Nations. He's earning in thousands of dollars. The same sermon, or sermon that some people have heard every time and probably over and over. And some don't even have CDs. They were there physically. They even got slain. And I realized that this guy knew how to receive from a man of God. And there is somebody who sat in the same sermon and he is stuck. I told you also of another story of a guy who was stuck, very stuck all his life. And then I gave him prayer quotes. I told him, go and listen to this. He, he didn't sleep that night. And he had called me to borrow three million shillings from me. The next morning he got a contract of tens of thousands. 
And he told me from that day, every month he earns in tens of, not ten, in tens of thousands of dollars. He just had prayer codes. And some of you sat in those prayer codes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, he even started rehearsing them. You put them on your wall, your Facebook, you put them on your status on WhatsApp, you even got excited, you even got the CD, you put it in the room. You started telling people, even when someone is stuck, you're the one who corrects them and then tells them, see, prayer code one, and when a person was, you're the one who even teaches. Have you been around people who teach what they... It's like I know a guy who has a million ideas, this guy, Every time he's meditating on how to do a deal. You see, if you get like a hundred thousand and then you invest, like, and if you hear him, you can invest and it works for you. But for him, it never works. It never works. So when I was growing up, I used to have those questions because I've seen them even in my personal life with the people that I've been around. That there are people who have received from me and there are people who have not received from me and they've stayed the same way. When I was growing up, there are people I coveted to shake hands. Up to now, I've never shaken their hands. There are people, my heart's prayer was to meet them. It was enough if they just said my name, Rivega Great. That would have sufficed. But I never had the opportunity to access those people. But I can tell you over the years, I received from those men things when I look now and compare the people who are around them, I don't see those things in them. Because they don't know how to receive the prophet and to receive from the prophet. They don't know how to receive a man of God and they don't know how to receive from a man of God. But some of them I also don't blame them. Because if you remember the time I preached about spiritual abuse, we men of God have abused that position so grossly. We think, in fact we have bordered on to witchcraft when it comes to fathering being your pastor and your man of God, some of us have bordered on two, witchcraft. Because witchcraft is three things. Intimidation, manipulation, and dominion. Dominion means I make you. Without me, you can do nothing. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you look through the history of some of the people who some have found it hard to sit under a man of God and submit their lives and serve fully. Some of them either don't understand it, some of them have been abused. I told you some of you the story of some of you have really not read church history as we know it. There was a story spoken of of the gentleman called Charles Parham. Charles Parham was the leader and the, 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 the man at the front line of the Pentecostal movement in 1900 from about 1989, I mean uh, 19, 1899 or through 190, Charles Parham, Topeka, Kansas. So he gets a group of young people and he tells them, let us stay in this room. Let us create a fire that can't burn out. They used to have that, you've heard about some churches that are doing chain prayers of non-stop prayers where this guy comes and prays and then another one continues, says that you have a fire that does not burn out. So they started that at Topeka, Kansas. And they used to come in to pray. And almost everybody was supposed to be praying for three hours. So you pray for three hours, you pass the baton. You, you come and find somebody speaking in tongues. Then it's your turn to come in. You tell him, you can go. Then you do your three hours like that. And then they used to share the word and teach and preach with each other. And they used to sit down to break bread together, right? And the other group of young men, they said, we are not going to leave this until we see God. The visitation of the Spirit. But during that time, there were laws in the United States of America. And those laws barred blacks from associating with white people in the same class, even in their forms of worship. Black men were supposed to be in their own uh, kumbaya, and, and they used to sing by, sweet, sweet by and by. Um, and then the white people used to also have their own classes. Of course, those were different services. You know black men worship differently. The way we, <laughs> something gets on us. I think they used to fear that when a black man is filled by the Holy Spirit, he can punch you. <laughs> anyway, it was really, it was an evil time and experience of demonic activity. Something that should not be hard understood or even thought about. But as, unfortunately, 
there was a time where black people could not share church with white people. And during that time, young Samo, the story says, used to sit outside at the stairs to hear Charles Parham teach. While the white boys are inside speaking in tongues, Ma karaba, koraba, karababa, karaba. Now, the story says, the Spirit of God left these white boys in the church. And power went and settled on William Sain. Because they took for granted what he took as treasure. Do you understand what I'm saying? Proximity is not what? The fact that you're near the man of God, you have his phone number and you can call him, it does not mean that you are going to receive from him. That's deception. Praise God. So over the years I saw many people who could not receive impartations from certain people. And I saw people who easily could receive. Easily. Easily. Easily could receive. And so that is how I learned. When I was a child and growing up, about 1918, I learned how to receive from men of God. I learned. I know how. I can get an impartation. Easily. From a man of God. Very easily, by the way. Very easily. Because I've understood the things I want to share with you today. Somebody say amen. We are all a total sum of probably three or four things. We are a total sum of our growing up, our bringing through the parenthood. Um, the parenting we received sometimes draws the nature and character of the kinds of people that we are. We are also some things because of our inheritances. Things that go beyond what our parents are parenting us for. But our inheritances. You understand what I'm saying? It's partly an inheritance that you're a Ugandan. You understand what I'm saying? Things that go beyond what your parents were responsible of. They, they were also results of that. Then there are, there are issues also to do with sometimes the experiences you go under that are outside the parenting and the inheritance, the neighborhood you grew up, the education that you had, etc. Then there's also a very distinctive factor, a very defining line called what you are destined to be, what you are supposed to be, and the thing God made you to be, the thing you are supposed to be, the call of God upon your life, the things that you are. These are the things that determine the end of how all of us are or will be. Am I making sense? And that produces four kinds of people. Tell your neighbor, four kinds of people. You understand? There are four people. There is, there is a person who is a victim. Yeah? There are people who are victims. They are not just victims in experience. They are victims by nature. In everything that happens in their lives, they take victimized modes. And some of them, again, it goes back to how their parents raised them up. Some people were raised a certain way and they always find themselves not only as victims of circumstances but they always victimize themselves and because they have a victimized spirit they never run out of experiences that cause them to be victims you remember proverbs 15 15 all the days of their what are what are evil the what that they are, they are all the days of the afflicted are evil all the days of the afflicted are evil all the days of the afflicted are evil. All the days of the afflicted are evil. The one they are for afflicted is victimized too. The people who are victim in a victim mode. Every time you victimize yourself, you're going to attract evil. Every time. Evil will never leave your house. It will never leave your door. It will never leave your life. Because every time you're looking at yourself as a victim of circumstance. Oh, I would have been this, but this person did this to me. Oh, I would have been that, but this person did this to me. Can this person is evil. How can they? Because you're always blaming people for everything that is happening in your life. And it's true people can hurt us and do all these kinds of things. But when you don't have a victim mentality, you're convinced that there is nothing any man can do to you to destroy your future. You might not be responsible of your past but you have the word of God that can guide you as a light and a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path that can help you light and shine your future. Praise God. So there are people who just carry a victim mentality. They have a victimized nature. And some of many victims people, many victim 
uh, mentality people. Many of them tend to float back into, into nasty when they become leaders. They always take advantage of every situation to become victims of circumstances and then they flip tails. They hurt and act to be hurt. They kill and act to be killed. You understand what I'm saying? They wound and then they act like they are wounded. They shoot you with a gun and then they go to the hospital. Then they leave you dying. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's very dangerous. Someone shoots you, you understand? And then acts to be the one wounded. Then they go to the hospital, they shoot me. Yet they're the ones who are shot. They're very dangerous people. What victimized people are like they're like a basket in which you're pouring water into. It will never get full. They never get satisfied. They have a, a personal spirit of greed. And the Bible says greed is idolatry. So they are idolaters. They are worshippers of idols without even knowing. Because they yield to certain spirits to perform and control. In everything that happens around their lives, they look for the drama that will attract sympathy. They have this un, it's an, un, an insatiable attitude of, they, they feel like everyone is obligated to them. Do you understand what I'm saying? You see, when you were young, your father was supposed to take you to school and give you a wonderful education and feed you and, and uh, see, it depends on, on whichever age that you're on. If you're a baby and you're a little child, a couple of months ago, we will change your diaper. You understand? We'll wash your nappy and then clean you. Then as you continue to grow, you learn toilet manners. Your parent is delivered from the responsibility of cleaning you. And if at a particular age, you pee in your pants, and then your parent says, Oh, and let's clean. At the age when you're supposed to be cleaning yourself, they are making a victim spirit on you. You know babies, they clean when they're even too old. You see such a big boy, he's putting on a what? A pamper. Then you're like, hey, should this age be putting on a pamper? For us, we, we, we never even had opportunities of pampers. At a young age, you're even trying to connect languages, but they're telling you don't so so there. At a young age. But kids these days, they speak English, they go to class, they even work, they can even communicate, but they're still just putting on what? Pampers, because their parents have money. Praise the Lord. Victimized what? Mentality. Victimized individuals and victim spirits on them. And then you grow up, and then you're six and you're seven, eight. You're supposed to be laying in your bed, but your mother is still laying it for you, my child. My child. I love you so much, even when you can lay your bed, but you can't, but I love you, then I lay it. Mama. <laughs> then you tell the child, oh no, even at your age, I'll still lay your bed, because I love you so much. You start raising a victim spirit in your house, but you don't even know it. A girl approached me a couple of months ago. She's a graduated lady working, and she told me, I can't cook. I said, what? She told me, Apostle, I can't cook. I said, you can't what? You can't cook. Some of you, you can cook, but your definition of cooking. <laughs> you know how to fry eggs and spaghetti. You can boil rice in a rice cooker, mama. You can cook. You know the basic things, you put in simanya oil, then after putting in oil, you put in condiments, right? And all those other things. Then you put in the nyanya, then you fry it, then you put in the butungul and green pepper, until simanya the nyanya becomes red, and simanya the butungul become a bit, then you pour in water, whoa, then you... Throw in water, more you now to cook. <laughs> I can cook. And you know, every, every, many women are convinced they are good cooks. By the way, but many, many women are very convinced they can cook. Eh? They can cook. First you first taste the food and you're like, 
Lord have mercy. So how was it? Mm, mm, best, best thing I ever tested ever. You say, tell your wife, you can have a fire. You can have a What? You can have a fire. You can have a cut them because they are fresh and she puts them there. Put them and your eyes start. <laughs> Victimized mentality. Praise God. Hallelujah. So children are raised up that way. And when they grow up in society, everything is victim. Mother dies, father dies, but they still think somebody out there has to lay their bed. Somebody out there has to cook their food. Somebody out there has to wash their clothes. You understand? Somebody has... And I mean, I thank God for my mother. If you don't wash your clothes, go on money. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? I was talking with a friend on Friday. The mother one time said, she was telling me of somebody who said, I'm going to kill myself. The mother said, help me. Wait. Yes, that's it. Then somebody said, please don't kill yourself. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want? Ice cream, which kind? Vanilla or what? Napoleon, okay, let me go and get Napoleon for you. Baby, don't kill yourself. Don't kill yourself, mama. Then tomorrow you die. Then after you die, the guy grows up and he's a big boy. And his wife breaks him with his heart. Then he gets a knife. I wonder people who kill themselves because of it. Some of you, you're too funny. Musmaya, they chucked you. Oh, I can't live anymore. You get, you get tablets. When you get a stone, how can you not love me? <laughs> ah! <laughs> Jesus didn't marry. He went to heaven, full of God. I can't eat. I can't sleep. I'm sick. Why? She refused to reply my text messages. You, you don't know love. Listen. God is love. I know God. To take up your definition of your love, you saw them in Smanya, the rich also cry. Smanya la tormenta, la kila, la madara, la hater, la everything. Praise God. Movies have, have, movies have spoiled people, by the way. You understand what I'm saying? Because those novels don't tell you that you might marry a woman with a funny armpit. You, they don't. They, do, they, do they say those things? No. She was fair to look at. Then you marry someone and you're like, oh. And the novel can't help you. <laughs> Yet she's born of your bone. Flesh of your what? <laughs> Flesh. Do I have witnesses in the house? Thank you for supporting me. Those are realities. But I mean that because her cutting is funny, she's not your wife. Come on, help me somebody. Am I, am I communicating? <laughs> so victimized mentalities, the people who just live around to victimize more. So when they grow up, some of you, you know, when I say such things, I'm not telling you look for who they are talking about. No. You put take a picture in yourself, put the camera on you. You'll be delivered. Some things are not for you looking around. How can you be 25 and you can't even clean your shoe? Please! A shoe! A shoe! You can't clean your shoe at 25. You can't clean your shoe. You can't brush your shoe. Victims are like a basket. Huh? They have a sense of entitlement. You pour in water, but they will never be full. They will never be satisfied. When somebody is in a victim mentality, even if you do work for them, they will never appreciate. Never. Have you been around such people? Now you can give your life and everything and all, and, and you plant yourself in them. Nothing they will never appreciate. You just do one thing. Kyle, you are so evil. I always knew. The person you are abusing has done 101 things for you. But that one small thing they've not done for you, they've become a problem. And you think they're the problem. No, they are not the problem. You're the problem. 
Because even though they've done for you a hundred things, you've never done them and think. You're always in the place of entitlement. You're starting and you're still telling your father, I want transport. You want, ask, don't want. When you're in primary, you would want because it's his responsibility to give you money to go to school. Now that you're 30, don't force your father to give you money. Ask humbly, know you're disadvantaged. You're lame in the spirit. Do I have a witness here? Victimized mentality. Then we have guys called enablers. Enablers are people with a self-centered love. It is very deceptive because it is love, but it is self-centered. They reach out to help victims, but with a mind and idea of, in the mind and idea of, because it's self-centered love, it expects rewards. It expects praises. It expects appreciation. It expects dependence. Enablers are people who want you to depend on them all their lives because they thrive on your appreciation and gratitude. Bama Troy and Zatata, Fewotan Diva Dete, Twan Diva Day, and says, Ay, yeah, 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 that's because it's self centered. They do things for people to know that they are good people. Have you been around people like that? Have you read the Bible where the Bible says that even if you give your body uh, but have not love, there are people who have even gone and died for people, knowing that they are enablers. They are not walking in the true revelation of love. But it's there. Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not love, it profited me nothing. But it's possible, we realize through the scriptures, that it is possible for a man to bestow all his goods to the poor, and then, and, and then give his body to be burned. But it is not in true love. It's self-centered. It is not in the love of a father. He's not doing it for Jesus. No, he's doing it for himself so that they can say he's a hero. That spirit is too serious that a man can even die for you. But the death he's dying is self-centered. It's not in the revelation of the love of God. So when an enabler comes in your life to help you, they will help you, they will help you, they will help you. But they can reach a certain place and some things start to shake them. Huh? When they're helping victims. And then they also start now considering and they say, They excuse themselves. Have you been around such people? They come like, me, I will die with you, mm, apostle. Me, I will, you, <laughs> the men who serve Jesus, when Jesus was walking with some people, you'd think they would die for him. But many of them were enablers. But they were serving in the circles. And we see the man at the last day asking, are you also going to leave? Because everybody left. Everybody left. They saw miracle signs and wonders, yes, but they left. Now, if Jesus was left, man of God, woman of God, would they reveal, fulfill your will and continue? Continue doing what God called you to do. Find your satisfaction in God and who He is to you. That shall suffice. That will be enough. Praise God. And then we have a group of guys they call persecutors. Those are people who always think everybody deserves what they get. It shocks you. Enabler is coming with self-centered love to at least help so that they can say, This one, he says, He says, Persecutors, always, they, they always, they are very self-righteous people. Enablers are self-centered. Love. Victims are self-centered with no love. You get the difference? So the victim is an idolater. The enabler is an adulterer. He that loveth the world is an adulterer. Because they love the world. They do things for men to praise them. The persecutor is the persecutor. For him, eh, everything that happens in your life, you deserve it. Spirit, a persecuting spirit. One time we were in the car, and then, and then, something happened to a guy on the road. They are like that. 
Nobody have put the car up. You understand? This, one time I even told him, hey man, there's a woman, we were talking about some person who was sick, like Kachiruare. You know, for him, eh? <laughs> everything, <laughs> it's as if they are, when somebody has a persecuting spirit, eh? when they are around everyone who has problems, they will never understand that some issues are beyond certain people. It's like when you're dealing with somebody who is dealing with drugs. You've ever taken drugs, you know what I'm saying. Not, not two bottles of beer. Real beer. Hard. You see, when, when you're dealing with, with, with drugs, for example, people around you can get to a point of thinking that you want what you're doing. You even do it deliberately. You understand? Now, if you meet a persecutor, persecutor says, ah, coffee. Coffee. They can't come to God and tell him, look, we want to help you. Why? Let him die. You, when you're around persecutors, they are fired. They, for them, they thrive on your failure. There are people in this world, eh? they are watching you. But inside their hearts, they are saying, they are watching you closely. And you need such people to stand. I realize this, when you don't have a persecutor, you will fall. Sukurimba, tell your neighbor, if you don't have a persecutor, you will fall. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? But there are people. You, you, you remember when, 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 when the psalmist tells God, cause me to walk in your righteousness because of my enemies. But that is the miracle that I up Seba. Ay, 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 ay. They said, now we have this guy. We are going to die with him. Come rain, come sunshine. They stuck on David. Eh? He says, lead me, O oh Lord, in thy righteousness. Because of my... Don't even lead me because I have to be right. Eh? It, it became too much. But all he needed was God to make him right. Because some people wanted him to fall. That's why I say sometimes you need persecutors. When people say, Sanero is going to fall, I say, mm. Mm. The Fanero is going to fall. I say, mm -hmm. this is the very reason you should make me stand. For their sake. Balareko. Do I have a person here who can testify on that? Yes, that poor just like that. They don't want to help you. They cannot reach out to help you. All they want is, have you failed? Wonderful. Sabagamba. Ah. Ah, ah, ah. You understand? Then the fourth group called the helper. Enablers hate helpers. Enablers hate helpers. Because every time, enablers hate helpers. Because every time they're around a the helper, the enablers self-centered love is exposed. Because self-centered love does not seek accountability. It seeks dependability. It wants you to depend on it on everything. And we have also erred as the body of Christ in that. Some of us ministers of the gospel have become enablers, not helpers. We don't understand the true love of God. We are loving like men. We are loving in our sensual nature, not in the revelation of the love of God. Jesus finds a man with demons of legion, a hundred million demons on the guy, uncountable. He casts them out. And then after casting them out, he walks away. He doesn't tell the guys, come and they give you a house and a car, so that I look after you forever, so that you'll be with me. No. Yeah, that we did it. As we were sharing with the leaders, and we were saying, God called us to care for people, not to take care of them. There's a difference. If God has told you to take care of a person, that is a definite instruction to take care of that individual. But it is not the calling of the pastor to take care of the whole church. Many people come in our counseling rooms. They want us to take care of them, not to care for them. When he's talking to Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Yes, I love you. What does he tell him? Feed my sheep. Give them the word. Give them the word. It's all they need. You need the word. 
You don't need counseling every Tuesday. Apostle, you see, I have a pain. Is it blue or pink? You understand? Apostle, some of you, eh? Mutumenya. Because you see, the helper, his love is not self-centered. He doesn't want you to depend on him. He wants you to depend on God. Mature, such that people can also come and eat of the fruit from you. When are you ever going to graduate also to raise others up? You're a victim in everything. You're victimizing yourself in everything. You're skipping church to church, looking for attention. Because for you, once they don't attend to you, eh? if they don't give you a certain attention, oh, if, if, if they... Some guy told somebody in the meeting, you know me, when I come, I want a certain seat. Because for them, if, you don't, if they don't give you a certain special this is the house of God. This is not your small little office that you sit in the other side. Know that we don't give honor to whom honor is due and, and faith to whom faith is due. But we have priorities here. We put the spirit above your offices. It's not offense. When you come in the house of God, respect it. Don't think that because you, you have a big office that side, therefore you're going to step on Apostle Emma or Mama Modesta. No, you must understand that the house of God is the house of God. Sit wherever you are. In the house of God, you're a child. You're not an MD. Because now you're also creating a certain kind of attitude that where now you're causing people to... You remember how they tell us how the scriptures teach us in the Gospels? How we put certain people on the front seat because we want something from them. Have you been in ministries where because the man has brought for us bags of cement? <laughs> Over he has four wives. Over he killed a person last week. He had to go to the The cement. Hey, mumuli wana ba tuto mina kutula wano mumu mina kutule yeye mabega katibali yaba sadi yaba yaba zivali tasa minti ba tule wano. Hehehe, yaba loko levanani. Praise God, diano limutoni yoku tula wano tule yeye mabega gwe. Do you understand what I'm saying? And that's why I thank God for Fanero. We have people who are very very influential, <laughs> but some of those people can go in the back and sit because they know where honor comes from. It doesn't come from the light. Praise God. It's like me, I used to love the back bench because I hated to be seen. That was just me. And I thank God I was a little more darker than many of you, so I would camouflage, you understand? But you see, there are also some people who sit in front simply because there are they, they some people, like when I was in, from, sorry, remember in high school, there are some people who could not concentrate when they are seated behind. Now they just can't concentrate. Have you been around such people? It's okay. Let them sit in front. Let them sit. Let them sit in their second, third rows because they feel comfortable there. They came early for that reason. Do you understand what I'm saying? Are you seeing where I'm coming from? Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why they can't understand when a successful businessman is on the streets preaching. Because back in the day, the churches, those were the people who would be giving people money. For them, they don't step on the streets because they are too rich. Those things, we have to kill them early. Tell your neighbor, we have to kill them early. Praise God. So anyway, help us. Yes, because their love is not self-centered. They'll hold you to three things. One, they don't want you to depend on them. They want to point to who you're supposed to depend on, which is God. Number two, they hold you accountable. Thy sins have been forgiven, but go and sin no more. Enablers promote sin because they always want you to come back running to them. You're fallen again. Okay, come. Then they dust you. Fall again. You're fallen over and become. Have you been around people who spoil children like that? Eh? A child stands from nowhere and then starts just crying out of nothing. <laughs> then he throws himself down. Boah! My mother, let me fall your back. She just goes and does her own stuff. So that you know you're not going to benefit from falling. But some children, they put their heads down, ah, then they go, bah. Then they carry, sorry, baby, sorry, sorry, enabler. Okay, stand again. Then they go away. Two, three minutes, ah, everything, you know, ah, bah. No, apostle, it's a stage. What stage? Stupid victim. Ignore the kid for a few minutes. Show her that she wants 
when Shaba cries and you see the veins coming out, come and clean her ears and say, don't cry, okay, keep quiet. Because again, if you don't, you have to first show them it's not paying yeah, to do that, but at a particular point you have to run to them. Because if you leave them until they keep quiet, you will also create another problem. You know people who laugh when people fall down? That's what their parents used to do. They killed emotion out of them. Somebody falls, <laughs> but the person has fallen. For what you know, best their heart. They don't first come to say, are you okay? I'm going now, I'm going to die, I'm going to go. And I'm going to go, I'm going to go, I'm going to go. And then you're like, but, but, what? Because again, it's also dangerous, brother, I'm teaching parenthood, you'll thank me later. It's also, it's also good that yes, to show them it's not rewarding when you're dealing with them, but also at a particular point, when you see the veins are coming out and the nose is swelling, come to the kid and tell him, okay, now you've cried enough, keep quiet. But because that spell of you delaying again will tell them it's not rewarding. But again, you have to teach them that you have to care for people. You have to care for people. When somebody's in trouble, it's hard for me to see somebody on a car accident or something and I just drive off. It's very hard. Because one time I was driving, a girl crashed into a, a ditch. I had to stop. I had to protect her bag because there were thieves which were going to take it. I don't even know the girl. I didn't give her my name and I tell her I come from Fanero. No. We took her to hospital. But I, because I, there's something in me that has to care when somebody's in trouble. If it's an accident, you might not be able to come out, but look through and see. If somebody being attended, you go. If you have time on you, can you see whether you can help someone? Some people get a poor now walk up to the nobody was watching again. Okay, but cool, my neighbor bought a babu gabu in a book. Cause you see, and this is a chigun, it's a proper and it's a goba, over a bachelor, a very coach. I got whatever day is our watch, Kabamu coach. Yes, yes, the guy made a mistake, but sympathize with him. He, the state he's in, he doesn't deserve to be in that state. I don't know if I'm making sense. So, the helper wants you independent, the helper wants you accountable when they're helping you. Yes, because when I am a helper, I must make sure, number one, I help people who really need help. You understand what I'm saying? I don't want to waste time on someone who doesn't really need help. They don't need help, they're just victims that will never be satisfied. I didn't like the way the fan first. You first it this side. No, that one, the way it did, no. Then you say, okay, now you put it in the right direction. Mm -mm, it's black. Then you say, okay, let us put silver. It's a little bit too silver. It should have been a bit goldish. Then you make it goldish. No, it's too lavish. But now, oh, yeah, What do you want? You understand what I'm saying? Victim. You have a victimized spirit, or you call it a victim. Or to bonya bana yo mo yo go. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, the, the English is too much, then you speak Luganda. He speaks Luganda in English, then you speak well. Mm -mm, that English is not Ugandan, then you speak Ugandan English. Mm -mm, English is not in What do you want? <laughs> Am I making sense? He has laughed badly. What do you want? He has not laughed. <laughs> Have I made sense? And so that is what they call the game of life. What I just shared right there. Victims, enablers, persecutors, helpers. Victims, enablers, persecutors, helpers. Who are you? That's why I told you, even when we are doing counseling, we want to be a bit more careful in the counseling. That's why the church has not grown. Because some of you come for things that are already in the, in the sermon. But you want me to repeat the sermon to you for two hours. Because I have to see you. But the stuff you're asking me is in the sermon. And I'm delaying the person who is paying a price to be available for the sermon. Because for you, if they don't give you attention, you will go. Go. Maybe God didn't call me for you. I was called to feed you with the word. I was not called to be your maid, your houseboy. Who are you? No. If I do it, I'm led by God. If I don't do it, don't ask it from me. Praise God. The church of a million people, uh -huh. 
you cancel a million people? When will you grow up to cancel victims from victim mode to helper le level? You have stayed a victim all your life. You are still dealing with the same demons I found you with in 2011. Oh, Chagani, the Tell your neighbor you've been on this mountain for so long. Move! Hey. We are trying to do things to get you out of victim mode. We tell you, te get 10 people. Why? Because we want to see a helper in you. Mm -mm. You can't even reach out to 10 people. For you're still a victim. You, you, you want counseling. Okay. So that's the game of life. Praise God. God has called us to care for people. Not to take care of them. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Take your bed and walk. Not now that I've healed you, come and live in my house. Hey. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus. Okay. How to receive. How to receive men of God and how to receive from men of God. You learn this, you'll grow very fast. God sends men in every generation. Joshua, Moses. Elijah, Elisha, Paul, Jesus Christ. He uses men. And whether you identify with them or whether you respect them and honor them and then receive from them or not, it's your problem. God will always grace that when God wants to move on the earth, he looks for men. He says, for God looked for a man to cover the gap that will build a hedge. If you, if you have not listened to the sermon of breaking the hedge, you might not understand what I mean. There's a difference between walls and hedges. Do you understand what I'm saying? Walls and hedges. That's why the Bible says that there's a place where the fowls of the air cannot go, where all the beasts cannot creep. There's a place where God can put you above certain attacks. That is when you learn to hedge yourself in. Hedges are different from walls. But the Bible says he looked for a man. Yes, thank you. There's a path which no fowl knoweth and which no vulture's eye has not seen. There's a place in God where you, you can hide, where the devil can't find you. It doesn't mean you won't be persecuted or hated, but none of those things will be of consequence. It will not touch you. They can attempt, but it will not have effect on you. Some people wonder why we're still persecuted and Paspanero is still growing. There are places in God where even if the devil looks for you like how, he can't find you. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So he says, I look for a man to stand in the gap that will build a hedge, hallelujah, to make up a hedge and stand in the gap before the land that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Now, if you're a preacher, go and study what it means for a man to make a hedge and stand in the gap. Because the making of the hedge precedes standing in the gap. If you can't build hedges, you can't stand in gap for your land. If you don't know how to build hedges, you cannot stand in the gap for your nation. If you cannot build hedges, you cannot stand in the gap for the church. If you cannot build hedges, you cannot stand in the gap for your continent. If you cannot build hedges, you cannot stand in the gap for the earth. You can never have a ministry. You can never have a success. You will never have a full potential line of experiences that go just beyond you and the near people you influence to influencing millions upon millions upon millions until you learn how to make up hedges. When you learn how to make up hedges, you'll stand in the gap for lands. And God will, will not destroy those lands because of you. But you must learn how to make hedges. Somebody say amen. But he looks for men. He looks for men. If God has sent a man and he said, Oh, I'm going to bring this move of the spirit through that man or that woman. Listen, despise him, hate him, envy him, jealous him all you want. It's him. Either receive an invitation from him, receive from him, or refuse. You stay wherever you are. Somebody say amen. Say amen again. Amen. Say amen again. Amen. So, God appoints men for everything. Right? Everything, for every move that he wants to bring on the earth. He thinks of a man. He doesn't think of himself. He thinks of using a man because there's a principle that spirits function in the body when it comes to the earthly plane. There is a law that every seed bears a body. Even God can't come in the spirit. He wants to use men. He came in the form of a servant, in the likeness of a man. 
Praise God. The Bible says God giveth it a body. He gives every seed. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that the body shall be but bare grain. It may chance of wheat or of some other grain. And the Bible says, but God giveth it a body as it has pleased him. And to every seed, his own body. To every seed, his own body. God gives every seed a body. What is the seed? Look at 11, the word. Anything that comes in the name of the word of God comes in a body. If God wants to send a word of revival, it comes in human flesh. If God wants to send a word of reformation, it will come in human flesh. If God wants to send a word of deliverance, it will come through human flesh. If God wants to die for the world and shed his blood for the sins of the world, it will come through human flesh. If he wants to give life to the earth, it will come through human flesh. Human beings exist and deal with the world, this earth as it is, because they have flesh. The moment you die from the flesh, to be absent from the flesh is to be present with the Lord. In every dimension, God needs men. Praise God. And the people God has sent before you, simply to build you, to make you. Not as them making you, but for him to make you through them. Am I making sense? So you must learn how to receive these men and how to receive from these men. That's the thing I was trying to tell you. That many people have been proximate to us, but they've not had access to us. Thousands have thronged at us, but they've not gotten virtue out of us. They sit around men of God, they, they walk past but their lives have not changed. They're still begging, they're still beggarly, they're, they are the true definition of dilapidation if you look at them. Yet they are around the man of God. They are around the man of God. Who can speak one word and their life changes? One word. There's a woman who didn't even come to my church. Yesterday I found out a video. She told me, you spoke one word in my life as bad and I gave birth to two children. Twins. She, when she came, she knew what she was coming to receive. But there are people who you lay hands on every day, but they don't know how to receive. Let me show you a few things. Number one, listen and receive from your man of God as you receive from God himself. Did you hear that? Listen and receive from your man of God as you would receive from God himself. Some of you, <laughs> you have, should I call it Lugezi Do you understand what I'm saying? There are people, when you're preaching, they think you're talking about everybody else except them. Have you been around such people? When you're preaching, for them to say, oh, they must be now talking about... <laughs> I can't. That is not me they're talking about. Oh, can it be me? Oh, oh. Listen. Listen. Every word that comes from that altar, wear yourself on it. Don't wear others on it. Don't be too quick to think that it's for another man. Because if you took time to think it through, you might be shocked. You might be shocked. Have I made sense? If you're not ready to submit to a man, don't. But when God tells you submit to that man or woman of God, everything they tell you should be received like God is speaking to you. That's why he tells us not to desire to be masters. For with, ma with that comes too much judgment. God judges us who teach because he knows that when people trust their lives with us, it is a serious deal. They listen to us like they listen to God. That's why I told you that thing can be abused and has been abused greatly by some men of God. Because you're supposed to listen to me like you're listening to God. I even tell you things that are not scriptural. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I force you to do them because I'm your man of God. No, sir. As according to scripture. Go and kill Peter. I'm your spiritual father. Go and kill him. That's spiritual abuse. But if you trust that the man God has laid in your spirit and your life is not that kind of person, whatever he tells you, listen like you're listening to God. You will receive from God. You will receive from God. And you'll receive from his spirit. Are you hearing me? First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13. He says, for this cause, give me the Amplified. He says, for this cause, we also thank God continually for this. For when you received the message of God, which you had from us, 
He says, you welcomed it not as the word of mere men. He says, but that truly it is the word of God. And, and he says, because of that, he says, look at that. He says, it is it, effectually at work in you who believe. It starts to exercise its superhuman power in those who adhere and trust and rely on it. Why? Because when you're receiving it, you're not receiving it as a word of man. You're receiving it as a word of God. Many of you, you're not blessed because when you hear us, you hear Apostle Grace speaking. You don't hear God. And so when the word comes, it finds you locked up. And it says, no, this one is receiving from Apostle Grace, not from God. It cannot exercise its superhuman power in you because you don't adhere to it and trust in it and rely on it as the word of God. You look at it as the word of mere men. Mere men. Mere men. Mere men. When your man of God tells you something, take it like it is God speaking to you himself. Don't even second guess it. If you don't trust me, look for a man you trust. And go and sit there and listen to it. But don't ever have an impression where you despise what is coming from this altar as a word of mere men. Oh, I'm not going to attend the meeting. Apostle Grace is not the one preaching. And I'll attend when Apostle Grace is there. Wow. Wow. How can you say you receive from me when you don't receive from Emma, who I have delegated to preach in my stead? How do you honor the Father, not honor the Son? How is that? He that loveth the Father, loveth the Son. You cannot tell me you yield to me, but then when Apostle Emma is preaching, you don't. Okay, that means you don't actually respect me because by the time the God in me trusted him to preach on that altar, the God in me, you're not despising me. You're not despising Apostle Emma. You're despising God because you don't know God. That's why I don't give altars to every Tom, Dick, and Harry, every sleepy, bunny, and freaky Willie. No. We prove men. We take time to prove you, to see. Will you really see it? Will you really listen? Why are you just excited? Because we have a demon spirit in Uganda. I don't even know which name it, it has. But people are too excited to minister than to be ministered to. And many of them have made grave mistakes. And some will never learn. They'll reach 60 and they'll still think they are right. They'll die very miserable men and they'll still think they are right. Because some people can never be wrong. They are victims. You understand what I'm saying? So when you receive the word of God, receive the word of God like it is God himself speaking to you, not me, a man. When your spiritual authority instructs you, hear God instructing you, let God judge me if I've instructed you in the flesh. I will accept that judgment. But if you disobey what I'm instructing you to do, it's on your head. Do you understand what I'm saying? Let God judge me if I am telling you. There are people I can't even advise. And I can see them knocking and I say, when I knock, because the spirit in them looks at me like a mere man. Do you understand what I'm saying? And some have knocked, you see a person hit a hard rock, pa! When you're like, manda kosta, zibara, korenderesa, you leave them. Why? Because some people learn by knocking a few things. There are some people that you have to let them to first knock and then they come back and say, okay, my head is swollen, what did I miss? Matthew 10, verse 40. He, listen, that receives you, Apostle Grace, receives me. And he that receives me, receives him that sent me. Did you hear that? He that receives you, he that receives from Apostle Grace, receives of Jesus. And he that receives of Jesus, receives from God. The reason why you don't receive from God sometimes is because you don't listen to the man of God. You don't receive. So he says, he that receives of me, that he that receives of you receives of me, and he that receives of me receives him that has what? Sent me. And 41 says, that, that the second verse says, he that receiveth a prophet, you remember what I mentioned? In the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward, and he that receives a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And verse 42, and whosoever shall give drink 
unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water only in the name of a disciple. Verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. If you receive uh, a prophet, you will receive his reward. Why aren't you flowing in the anointing I'm flowing under? Maybe you don't receive me in your spirit. Maybe I'm too young for you. <laughs> Maybe I'm too fast for you. Maybe I walk too much. I don't know. Maybe you're too deep for me. <laughs> Maybe you're too what? You might think I'm too deep for me. Like for you, a deep person. <laughs> One time I asked a man common sense. I asked him, if you're too deep, why isn't God causing people to listen to you? Why is he causing me, the shallow one, to be listened to? You, the deep one, and then he leaves you. It's a thing, the war I had with people who are attacking jealousy. But for him, he's entertaining people. He's just speaking things people want to hear. I told him, don't be foolish. Whether he's speaking things people want to hear or they don't, God is not stupid to allow that man to sit 40,000 people in an auditorium. And for you who has a lot to share, you are sitting two people. Shut up! But he's always telling stories. That preacher, he's always telling stories. I told him, just hush your mouth. Don't even ever talk about it. Because if you do that, you might never have a ministry. Keep quiet. Keep. Maybe you're not receiving from me because you see me a certain way. Or because he drives a black car. Maybe he's cult. Because his car is black. So the guy said, no, I need a black car. White. Oh, you know Kwambala white. Freemasons put on white. You know what I mean that they are righteous. The devil appears as an angel of light. You know what I mean that he's righteous. Mutuyambe, he's putting on black. She's putting on red, danger. Blood. Lightning will strike you. Remember those days? Number two. This one, write it in bold. Avoid familiarity. Avoid what? Familiarity. Familiarity is a very deceptive place when you're dealing with a man of God. Because men of God, if you find a man of God like me, eh? like, do you know some men of God who want to keep space from their congregants? Eh? They are special, they are this, they are that. Some of them, they were trained in their Bible schools when they were growing up, that when you become familiar with people, they'll take you for granted. But some of them in that process became idols. They created idolatry because they also became victims in the process. They are too special. They have to have bodyguards around them. You have to put a certain thing. By the way, watch people who create certain atmospheres around them. Many of those people are trying to cover for an insecurity. There is an insecurity they cover. I don't need bodyguards to walk in here. What am I insecure of? How can you harm me? What, you who has come to pray. Okay, if you have come to harm me and you have come to pray, where is my God who I'm going to teach that day? Do you understand what I'm saying? Be free a bit. Don't be special men of God who are unapproachable. Listen, the more Jesus became anointed, he sat with drunkards. He sat in brothels with them. Some people, the more they become anointed, you are there, I am here. Don't come near me. You understand? When you're walking, Singakati now I was like with some men, eh? I would be having like two guys standing here, another guy in the corner, so over. 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 Walking behind me, which said that night, Those are movies. It's not revelation. We are guarding the man of God. From what? Multitudes are thronging on the Son of God. Multitudes are thronging on the Son of God. But you are guarding a man of God. We are guarding him. Praise God. Hallelujah! So, he didn't want to be familiar with, but she or she takes a position of victim. 
and then creates an idol. Because idolatry is not what people do for you. Idolatry is what you take in your heart. People can kneel and do things, but in your heart, if you have not taken it in there, they can kneel, but if in your heart, your spirit is not proud, you'll create an atmosphere around you where people will honor you but not worship you. Do you understand what I'm saying? But if it's in your heart, you'll feed from it. The more people kneel down, man of God, you can now and become a footer. Do you understand what I'm saying? Man of God! Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. God has called us to honor, give custom to whom custom is due. And people will honor us as the Lord will raise us up. But men of God, however much the Lord raises you up, never create an idol in your spirit and start feeding on men's attention. Because if you do, the day you wake up and they are not there, you might die of depression. You might even doubt that God called you. Praise the Lord. And some people have built that and they're inspiring young people also to... I say a young boy, he has a fellowship of about 50 people. He's also now working with some guys to... I don't know what No, seriously, I ask him, what are they going to kill you for? Tell me what? Tell me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Fifty members, you're also working with people walking around you because you say man of God. But some people are protecting him. Even you, fifty members. Kati, if you've started protection at that level, mama, by the time you now pastor 1,000 people, 200 of them will be your bodyguards. Praise God. It's wrong. That thing is wrong. I hope I'm making sense. Isn't it wrong? It is wrong. Never bring that nonsense in Fanero. Worship. People know. Honor. Honor. Honor the anointing on the man. Do everything. But don't build idols. It's not godly. Praise the Lord. So, those ones fell because they didn't want to be familiarized and then became proud. But again, still, the point is familiarity. Familiarity has caused many people to fail to receive. Some of you are familiar with people because they are fellow Ugandans. Some of you are familiar with men of God because you are the same height. Some of you are familiar with me because I'm your OB. We went to the same school. You understand? Some of you familiarize with me because um, we come from the same home area. Homeboy. Some of you familiarize with me because we worked together. You think we are the same level. You can talk to me or act a certain way before me because you think you know me. But Apostle Grace is not a banker. Luvega Grace was a banker, not Apostle Grace Luvega. That's another man. He didn't bank with you. He didn't see God with you. He's not your OB. He's not your OG. He's not even your brother. That man in the spirit is not your brother. He's physically your brother, your uncle, your cousin, your relative, your distant cousin. But he's not that man inside. He's not your brother. He's not your OB. The one inside you, that woman inside you, she's not your OG. That's another person. Don't familiarize with the outside person and then undermine and take for granted the person inside. I don't know if I'm making sense. Have I made sense? Some of them, it's because you play basketball with them. A guy thinks he can talk to you. I remember our earlier days of playing basketball. Some kids would do things. And I'm like, does this one know what they've done? But you leave them to grow. He's just playing with you because he's humble. Don't think he's your level because he plays with you basketball. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some of them it's because you laugh with them and you can send them a WhatsApp message. How are you? Ah, Chikos. Let me show you something funny in Mark chapter 6 verse 1 to 7. Give me the amplified of that. Jesus went away from there and came to his own country. Listen. And hometown Nazareth. Right? And his disciples followed him. And on Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who listened to him were utterly astonished. Many of them were utterly astonished, because it is his home where? Galilee, Nazareth, right? And then, they were saying, where did this man acquire all this? 
What is the wisdom, the broad and full intelligence which has been given to him? That mighty works and exhibitions of power are out by him. It's like I met an Obi who told me, why do people have a problem with you? Where did you get power? Because he, he was with me in Kinder view, I didn't have power. My God, I said, God, give me something that day. I want him to get so slain. Eh? I think I power in Nigeria. <laughs> Some people think I've just gotten anointed now. Ma, my children are in Nigeria. Rakubanga, I distanced from familiar people during that time. Some people didn't know that I was functioning. There were many times I used to make lame men walk and come back in my father's house and nobody knew. But I had my thing from campus. So he said, <laughs> next verse. And then he says, Is it not this carpenter? Ah, familiarity. The son of Mary, Katamani Kamaza, Kataganda Kayose, Funeguni, and Jose. Who see one on a Simon, Simone, and you don't want to see I see that familiarity. So when Jesus moves in a certain grace, the first thing that comes to their head, brother of James, son of a carpenter. Son of Mary, brother of James and Jose, and Judas and Simon, and not his sisters here among us, and they took offense. People have problems. They became angry because he didn't look like James and Jose, and he's no longer functioning like Judas. How can he say certain things anymore? And they, they took offense at him and were hurt. That is, they disapproved of him, and it hindered them. It hindered them, not him. It didn't hinder Jesus. It didn't hinder Jesus. It hindered them from acknowledging his authority and they were caused to stumble and fall. They were caused to stumble and fall. They were caused to stumble and fall. If my brother had looked at me and did not acknowledge what is inside me, he would fall and stumble. That would be him with his God. He didn't change the fact that he's my elder brother. No. When he's speaking on the family wall, he's my elder brother. He right there, I take instructions. On that angle, even me, I, I coil. But when I get on the pulpit, he knows this is not my brother. This is another man. He knows it. And he respects me, by the way, highly. But if they did not acknowledge his authority and they were caused, the Bible says they were caused to stumble. Somebody stumbles and falls. Because you don't recognize a man's authority, because you're familiar. You grew in the same home area. You will stumble and fall. Because you tell the place basketball with a person and I speak to him anyway, you will stumble and fall. Because you laugh with a man on WhatsApp, proximity. You will stumble and fall. Take the difference. Draw your lines. Know your boundaries. Praise the Lord. Next verse says, But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, deference, reverence, except in his own country and his own relatives and his own house. Many of you people, your family relatives cannot receive from you because they look at you as their young sister. They will stumble and fall. They will stumble and fall. Some people, I'm cursed because I'm Ugandan. If I was an American, and I'm the one with Fenero, I'm an American. I'm an American. Do you know blacks up to the dark color light? Up to now they play free sermons of white men. No Christian radio station plays free sermons for black people. Their own people. They don't trust the word in their own. Which is okay. All of these people are wonderful teachers. But God has raised other people too. Do you know, if I was American and I have white hair, they will not call me cult. They will just call me a deep white man. Because the lighter you are, the more they trust you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? 
familiarity. We are both ushers. But God has given a special word for you. Uh-uh, we are ushers. <laughs> Carry, usher. You cluster yourself and think that because you're serving, it's like some of you, you are in the same classrooms. You think we are all equal. No, you're equal under the constitution of Uganda, but not under this constitution. Not under this constitution. I have never backed at Pastor Zach. Never. But some of you have backed at me. But of course it was your parenting, the way you were raised. So I forgive you. But I have never backed at him. I have never backed at him. I see pastors abusing their pastors openly. What are you parenting these people to do? If I disrespect Modesta, what are you going to do to her? Or when you build a ministry, what are you going to do to your pastor? Do you understand what I'm saying? Respect those who are ahead of you. I respect my leaders, even those before me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Old women as mothers. Old men as fathers. That the gospel should be honored and respected. Pastor Zach, no, no, no. Call me Zach. No, no, no. Don't call him Zach. He might ask you to call him Zach. It's false humility. They think that by saying I'm Zach, they are humbling themselves. Let me tell you, humility... <laughs> Humility is not what they call you. Humility is who you are before God. Give honor to whom honor is you. Of course, some of them it's because they're trying to say, I'm not a title person. I understand you're not a title person. But don't create a society where you're giving people impression that somebody can speak to anybody the way they want because you're equal. You'll cause babes to error. Because some people are too immature to tell the difference. They can call you Zach and even tell you things they're supposed to tell Zach. Not Zach, but Zach. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. And stumble and fall. Recognize the authority on people's lives. Some people think it's building church. Oh, like for me, really, Rebecca Grace, even if you call me Grace. Some of you call me Grace. I've never asked you to call it. I don't apostle, please. I the bishop. I don't like that nonsense. And people can call me Grace and go away with it. Because, really, it's not what you call me. It's that thing in the car. You understand? It's not the title on the car. It's in the car. If you call me Grace, but you respect what is inside there, you're good. Do you understand what I'm saying? You're good. But they're calling me Grace. Nenga, you're meaning Grace. Continue. <laughs> You'll stumble and fall. So, let's continue. But, and, and he was not able to do, the Bible says, even one work of power there, except that he laid hands on a few sickly, not sick, he didn't heal cancer, and cured them. Sickly, if you read the Greek word there for sickly, is minor afflictions like flu and cough. When Jesus entered his own, he could heal flu and cough. When he goes in another city, he could do signs, miracles, and wonders. Why? Because familiarity. For you, you're too used. You see? And that is very wrong. Never get used. Otherwise, you'll only be healed of sickly things, but not of major things. Praise the Lord. And next verse says, and he was not able to do even one work of power there, except that he laid hands on a few sickly people and cured them. And the next verse says, and he marveled because of their unbelief, their lack of faith in him. And he went about among the surrounding villages and continued teaching. And see something funny in the next verse. And he called to him the twelve apostles and began to send them out as his ambassadors, two by two. After he left his home village, he called his apostles and sent them. If you read the scripture, go and read for all the twelve apostles of the Lamb and look at each name and find out where each of those came. And look at that list and tell me how many disciples came from Nazareth his hometown. Go and look at the twelve. Look at Gundi, besides his brother, of course, Jameson. Go and look at the twelve and start to look through and tell me how many people came from his hometown. You'd be surprised. The biggest percentage he picked in different villages can any good, that was Nathaniel's problem, come from Galilee, Nazareth. Nothing good can come from there. Nothing good can come from there. 
Nothing good can come from there. Praise God. Familiarity. Avoid, next point, cheap talk, light jests. Who knows what a jest is? Cosy jokes, those were silly jokes people have. Eh? Sitting in gossip and slander of a man of God. Avoid that nonsense. The moment they speak of your man of God, move away. Or hush them. Don't sit. Psalms 105, verses 14. He says, He allowed no man. No man has permission to touch an anointed person. No man has permission. He says he allowed no man to do them wrong. In fact, he reproved kings for their sake. And the next verse says, and he suffered no, he says, saying, touch not mine anointed and do them no harm. If you do, you'll be in trouble. You'll be in big trouble. Big, big trouble. Don't touch the anointed of God. Don't touch the anointed of God. Somebody say amen. If you want to receive and receive from a man of God, there are people who are already judged for doing these things. Go to those men of God and women of God and be seeking you in the name of God. If you have touched the man of God, go to him and say sorry. If he forgives you or not, just go and say sorry. Second Thessalonians. Pray for them. Pray for them. That's another point. Pray for your men of God. Praise God. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 from verse 1. Give me the Amplified. The first verse and the Amplified. The rest probably we can read in the KJV. Furthermore, the Bible says, brethren, do pray for us. Do what? That the word, when you're praying for me, these are the prayers I need. That the word of the Lord may speed up. Spread light rapidly and run its course. That's what I want you to pray for me. Pray every time you're praying for me. Tell God we want the word of God and his spirit to speed on and spread rapidly and run its course. And be glorified and extolled and triumphed even as it has done with you. Say, God, let people receive and be blessed by this man like I have been blessed. Just pray for the word to have its course for us. You don't need to pray for me to have a cow in your house. Uh-uh. Pray for the word to have its course. There's a blessing in there. Next verse. Give me the KJV. And that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, from all men who have no faith. That's your prayer for us. And the next verse says, but the Lord, the Bible says, is what? Faithful. Uh-huh. Who shall what? Establish you and keep you from what? From evil. Somebody say, Amen. Now, the word but there, if you go in the Greek lexicon, strong definition of the word but, the word actually but there is an error in English. The real rendering of the word but is actually and. The Greek word is de, de. It's but, moreover, but also and. And in this instance, the rendering there for verse 3, verse 4, and verse 5, if you read, for example, the beginning of verse 4, it says, uh, and, that was right. And verse 5, and, if you read that word and, and then you go in the Greek, uh, in the Greek and Hebrew lexicon, the strong language, you realize the same Greek number for and is the same Greek wonder for the and before and the same Greek wonder for but. So literally, the word there was supposed to be and. Now, if you go back again to verse 3, and the, and the Lord, it's not supposed to be but. It says, and the Lord is faithful. When you pray for us, who shall establish you? Why is he establishing you? Hey, why is he establishing you? Because you pray for your men of God. And he will keep you from evil. Many of you are falling because you don't pray for us. You judge us. You don't pray for us. That's why you're falling. And the next verse says, And we have confidence in the Lord touching you, that ye both do and will do the things which we command you to do. That means when you pray for us, the things we teach you start working in you. Wow. Fifth verse. And the Lord, listen, more on that, will direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting of Christ. Why? Because you pray for your men of God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Second last, minister to your men of God. 
minister to them. Praise God. That one is also abused, eh? Because if you find an indifferent man of God, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You see, all of you know from Psalms 133 that the anointing flows from the head. You understand what I'm saying? It flows from above. It, it flows from somewhere. The anointing just then fall. It flows. The people don't understand that the anointing is a flow. They just think it, no, it's then fall. It, no, it's like there's a light, precious ointment. Verse 1, he says, uh, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It rises like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the scotch to his garment. That precious oil. And as the dew of Hammon and as, uh, that descended upon the mountains of, of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forever. There. So, minister. The boy Samuel ministered unto the Lord under Eli. Minister. Communicate to your men of God. Bless them. Learn to bless men. These people will teach you the word. Learn to bless. Some of you, all you do is receive. They teach you the word. They feed you. They clothe you. Learn to also bless. That's why Paul says in Philippians, something very important, 4, verse 10. Philippians 4, verse 10. Give me the Amplified. He says, I was made very happy in the Lord that now you have received your interest in my welfare after so long a time. You were indeed thinking of me. You understand? The Philippians thought about the welfare of Paul, but you had no opportunity to show it. They were broke, which was okay. The next verse says, but not that I'm implying that I was in any personal one. And that's what we want to make you understand. You don't bless your preachers because they are poor. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it's also wrong for a preacher who doesn't do the principles and is broke to force his own to bless him. That's abuse. Get your facts right, get your principles right. Because one thing I'll tell you as a man of God, the first thing that you're delivered from is those small little things you forgive you. Those are nothing. God must be your source. I can tell you that the people who have blessed me most, some of them have never even sat in, in this meeting. Some of the people who have blessed me most have never sat in this meeting. It shocks me also. It also shocks me, meaning God had to cause them to bless me. So, Paul was not at the level where he was telling them, now give us because we are poor. No, we bless you and probably pass it to someone who can use it. But do it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do it. He says, for I have learned how to be content. I'm satisfied to the point where I'm not disturbed or disquieted in whatever state. That's why you realize none of my pastors beg. None. And many people have realized when you don't have a culture and policy of manipulating people to give, they don't give foolishly. Do you understand what I'm saying? And they want to be manipulated. Listen, if you're waiting for us to tell you 30 minutes of giving, I swear we will not. That is not Lubega Grace and my pastor. Because we are not lacking people. We are not poor. Do you understand what I'm saying? And it's wrong to build a ministry based on that. Have you been around churches where they have like forgiving? Miracle offering. Faith offering. Faith and giving. Then the real offering. Then people are and You know what they do? When they are coming to church, they also get change of one, one, one thousand. Miracle offering in our Sula Morukumi, then offering in our Salam, then offering in our Salam, then offering in our Salam. Then we come at way. Praise God. And he says, I know, this is Paul, how to be a base and live humbly, straight in circumstances. And I know also how to enjoy plenty and live in the abundance. I've learned in any way, because when you become a priest, God becomes your portion. I promise you. I promise you, there is nobody here I look on to say that if this person has not given, I will not leave. I swear, even you, you know it. I've never called you for money. I've never called anybody here in this building. I want 100,000. Please give it to me. I have never in my life, I've never begged the man. I understood what it means to be. I know how to do the principles. I'm a giver. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm a what? I'm a giver, and sometimes deliberately, every year now, I've decided to be the biggest giver in Fanero. Every year, I try to be the biggest, every year. 
Fact that I show you. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not pride, it's the truth. You have to be free. Do you understand what I'm saying? But he says, these are also hard things to talk about in a generation where people have been manipulated eh? to do things and abused. Am I making sense? So, he says, um, in all circumstances, the secret of facing every situation, whether well-fed or going hungry, having a sufficiency and enough to spare, going on without and being in one. And he continues to say, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I'm ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me and I'm self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Mark Andy. And the next verse says, but it was right, listen, it was right and commendable and noble of you to contribute for my needs and to share my difficult. It was noble. Bless the people who bless you. Simple. Bless them. It's noble. It's commendable. It's commendable. It's not manipulation. It's commendable. It's biblical. This is something I have done since I was 18. I have blessed the men who have blessed me. And I can tell you, I don't know, God has done things. Do you know how many radio stations in Uganda are airing my sermons and I'm not paying a dime? Some guy approached me recently, I want to take your sermons and put them in Kenya for free, in India, but I have partnered with ministries. Their ministries have given money every month and some don't even know it's Apostle Grace. Because if they know it's me, they'll think I'm cult and they'll refuse my money. Yet, there is even a ministry I remember very well, they fought me live on radio. And I still carried a seed and took it. And the man who even fought me on radio didn't even know that I blessed his ministry up to, to this day. That's me. That's Grace Lubega. You understand what I'm saying? That's what we want to teach you. Next verse. And you Philippians yourselves well know that in the early days of the gospel, when I left Macedonia, no church or assembly entered in partnership with me and opened up a debit and credit account in giving and receiving except you only. And he says, for even in Thessalonica, you sent me contributions for my needs, not only once but a second time. And not that I seek or am eager for your gift, but I do seek and eager for the fruit which increases to your credit, the harvest of blessing that is accumulating to your account, the harvest of blessing. How can a man teach you for five years, five years, five, six? And you can't even buy a glass of water. A glass, hey, some of you, what demon do you have in you? You really think I need your water? When you didn't give me water for five years, did I ask you for water? I didn't ask you for water. I don't need your water. I have too much water. Even in my fridge, I, Bananga, I have water in my fridge. I have water. I don't need your glass of water. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't need your glass of water. Praise the Lord. I don't need your what? Next verse. And he says, but I have your full payment and more. I have everything I need and I'm amply supplied now that I receive from the the offerings and what. And verse 19 says, and he says, and my God will liberally supply. He will supply, fill to the full your every need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. You're still lacking some of you because you don't bless those who bless you. That's why you're lacking. Praise God. Last point, become partners in the ministry. Bless the man, yes, but become partners in the ministry. Let me deliver you of something. Partnership is not 20,000 every month. Partnership can be 1,000 shillings every month, but be a partner. Did you hear what I'm saying? It can be 500 shillings a month, but be a what? A partner. Who gives God 500 shillings? Don't allow to be intimidated because of the little money. The point is not the littleness of the money. The point is the principle. I don't know that I'm clear on that. Register and be a partner in the ministry. Do you know I'm a partner in my own ministry? Do you understand what I'm saying? Become a partner. Become a partner. If the money is a lot, you give 500 shillings, but give it. And allow God to grow you. Let me tell you, when I started partnering with ministry, I just used to increase almost every month. I just made a personal commitment before God. But I'll tell you something. God blessed me in ways I could never tell you. There are things that don't come to you by prayer. They just simply come by you knowing what to do. Do you understand what I'm saying? Am I clear on that? Become a what? A partner. Be a partner. 
Don't be intimidated by Smanya. Some people give 100,000. Me, I don't have a job. Can you rent 500 shillings a month? Give it. And tell God, grow me. He will grow you from 500 to 1,000. Me, I started partnering at campus with about 1,500 shillings a month. Can you believe it? I contributed to church buildings and I could give only 1,500 shillings every month. One five students. But I have been partnering with the gospel since I got to know this. And I'm not broke. I'm not rich by mistake. No. Don't be funny. Partnership is key. You remember what I read for you, some of you in Philippians 1 the last time? I think it's from verse 4. He says, in every prayer of mine, I always make my entreaty and petition for you all with joy, delight. And he says, and I thank God for your fellowship, your sympathetic cooperation and contribution and partnership. This was in advancing the good news, not to Apostle Paul, but they were not only givers to Paul, they were also givers to the ministry. You see the difference? And he says, and from the first day you had it until now. And he says, and I'm convinced and sure of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you, which work? Giving will see to accomplishment to the day of Christ, right up to the time of return. That means when you start partnering with the ministry, it becomes his duty as God to accomplish it through you to the end. That means he will never kill his supply to you. You can't tell me, Apostle, I've been in Fanero for three years, for four years, my businesses I'm doing are dying. Yes, I give my tithe, but my businesses are dying. Become a partner. Partner. You cannot tell me you've spent two, three, four, five years with this message. Prayer codes are there. What? And then you end up, yes, tithe is good. That is to the Lord. It will make you a survivor. But you have to go above surviving. Do you understand what I'm saying? Am I making sense? And he says, I'm convinced and sure of this very thing that he who began a good work in you will continue to do because then you will continue. Uh, uh, causing you to give, developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. That means you'll be increased because God cannot do. Right? The next verse says, It is right and appropriate for me to have this confidence and feel this way about you all because you have me in your heart. That means the person who partners has you in their heart. And I hold you in my heart, listen, as partakers and sharers with me in the grace of God. That means everything I do as a ministry, you partake of the blessing. Everything I do, every time I stand on that altar because you partner with me, you partake of that blessing. I don't partake it alone. You become partakers and sharers of God's unmerited favor and spiritual blessing on my life. Whatever is on me, you take apart. And he says, this is true both when I'm shut in prison and when I'm out in the defense and confirmation of the good news. And the next verse says, for God is my witness how I long for and pursue you with love. In what? And what? Of Jesus Christ, what? He knows, he knows the place of partnership. You must learn to be a partner. Tell your neighbor you must learn to be a partner. If you have 1,000, you give it. Don't worry, God will grow you. If you have 2K, you can give 2K, give it. Because me, that's what I used to do from campus. I kept on, if I can tell you how much I give, <laughs> I was shocked as the one giving all that much. Even me, the money shocked me when I was giving it. I said, God, am I the one giving this much? I don't want to say it because some of you might get slain. I tell you, I'm serious. I'm serious. I looked and said, is it me giving all this money? It was a lot of money. But I have not forgotten that it began at 19, 18, up to this age. And I'm still giving. And he's developing that good work in me every month. I'm a giver. Every month I'm a giver. I'm a big giver. And I love it. Because God surprises me more and more. As in he does things for me, even me that shock me. Sometimes I start projects and people come and they say, I've given you this. Eh, you know, you guys, I've given you everything you need for this. And I'm like, eh? That's how people bless me for me. That's how people bless me. I go to a level where people would dream what I want and they bring it. God, they've dreamt it. God knows us. Tell your neighbor, God knows us. He does know us. When you see these men of God who are struggling financially, that is to, those guys are not titans. Now they are jealous with givers. 
give and it shall come back to you. Good measure pressed down, showing together, shall men give to your bosom. Men will give to you. I said men will give to you. Somebody say amen. Raise your hands and speak to God. Come on, speak to God. Tell God, cause me to learn to receive from men and women of God. Cause me to learn to receive from women of God and men of God, the people you have placed in my life. Come on, speak in other tongues. Speak in any other language you have. Hey, me. of your kingdom in Jesus mighty name we pray and believe the Lord saying said Amen the message you have just heard was brought to you by Sonero Ministries International for more information contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at sonerocompala at gmail.com you can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org or better still Feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowship at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest.